Hello and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn about the TCP IP. In order to understand how the data can be transmitted between devices in the network world, I would like you to imagine that you have a package and you want to deliver this package to a family member or a friend. In order to do that, you went to USPS and they give you this label and they ask you to fill it. In that label, you have to put information about yourself. So your address, your house number or apartment number, uh, your name. Then you have to put the destination information. Where is that package going to? What is the address? What is the house number or apartment number for the destination? And they probably gonna ask you some question about what is the package itself? What's inside it? Is it something required? A specific handling so let's start with OSI model OSI stand for open system interconnection model this model improved by international organization for standardization OSI consists of seven layers application presentation session transport network data link physical some engineers also using the layer number so physical is layer one data link is layer two network is layer three transport is layer four session is layer five presentation is layer six application is layer seven so osi will work as the postal service that will be responsible to transmit or deliver data from one device to another device. So we can think of application presentation session layers as the package itself. Transport is the transportation that we will use to transmit the data from one device to another device. We can think of network layer as the apartment number or the house number. We can think of data link as the full address. And then we have the physical layer. The physical layer contain information about the physical component that we will use to transmit the data from one device to another device. Example of that is the NIC card, network interface card. So if you are using a wired desktop, the internet wire will be connected to the NIC card and it contain also information about the cable itself. Let's take a brief look about application presentation session. Uh, but before we start about those layers, we need to understand as a network engineer, we're not going to interact with those layers. So we have the application layer. The application layer is the closest uh, layer to the end user. Uh, this is mean that the OSI application layer and the users interact directly with the software application. This layer uh, determining the resources availability and synchronization communication or synchronizing the communication. So the main job for application layer is uh, to distinguish between the applications that we are sending through our network. After the application layer, the uh, presentation layer comes. Presentation layer ensures that the data is usable and it also define how two devices should encode and encrypt the data. So after application layer specify the application that we will use, the presentation layer will ensure that this data is usable. Then we have our session layer. Session layer responsible for creating communication channel between the sender and the receiver, responsible for opening the session, ensures that the session remain open and functional while data is being transferred. After the sender send all his data, the session layer will be responsible for graceful closing the session. After the data go through application presentation session and each of those layer does a job in order to deliver the data, let's continue with the transport layer and see what will happen to the data in that layer in order to be able to transmit it from one device to another device. The transport layer contains the protocol used for transmission the data. There is two main protocols that can be used here. Protocol called TCP and another protocol called UDB. 
each one of those two protocols have its own way to deliver the data. Besides the protocols that we will use to transmission the data, there is something called segmentation happen in transport layer. So if we are sending a file and this file is large and we cannot send it in one time through our network, for that reason we can do the segmentation here. We can take our file, cut it to pieces in order to be able to send it through our network and each single piece of that file we will call it segment so if we took our file right here if we are planning to send mb3 file and this file is large and we cannot send it one time we can do a segmentation here and cut it to two pieces each piece of those pieces will call the segment so we have segment one and segment two there is also something called port number and we can think of port number as a label so application layer has information about the application and in the transport layer we have just the port number and the port number identify what type of application we are using so after we define the protocols that we will use to transmit the data we cut the data to pieces and then we will add the source port and the destination port to our data transport layer will take the data and forward it to the network layer the network layer includes something called IP or internet protocol and as we said we can think of the network layer as the apartment number so the network layer will receive the data after we segmented the data and after also the transport layer add the source and the destination port so when the network layer receives the data he will add source IP address and the destination IP address so why do we have the source IP address the source IP address and the source port number is added to the data in case of there is a response so we can send the request asking for something and we should expect response to that request that's why we have a source IP and source port then the data will go to the data link layer so we have the transport layer header the network layer header we have the data and when the data arrive to the data link layer the data link layer will add its own header the most important field in data link layer is something called MAC address or media access control address so we can see in data link layer something called source MAC address and the destination MAC address plus something called data link trailer after that the data will will be forwarded to the physical layer the physical layer will include information about the cable the physical cables that we are using the NIC the network interface card in that layer actually the computer doesn't understand anything but bits so what will happen is that our data will arrive to the physical layer the physical layer will transform this data to bits bits is 0 and 1 and then forward the data to the cable the most famous cable is the ethernet cable the copper ethernet cable if we are using ethernet cable the data will be sent as an electronic signal so what will happen when our desktop here trying to send the data through the network the data will go through application presentation session transport network data link physical every layer will participate with his own uh, feature and header in order to be able to send the data to another computer or another receiver so let's take our example right here in order to understand more about the osi model uh, this is just an example in order to understand osi model but in real life it work more complicated than this so let's imagine that i open my browser my google chrome browser for example and the type google.com this is my ip address this is my mac address and google using a server with this ip address and this mac address let's see what will happen in uh, osi model so when i am sending the data 
something called encapsulation will happen. Encapsulation is a process to add the layers to the data in order to send it. So I will have my data right here. It will go through application presentation session. The application layer will add information about the, the application itself. Presentation will ensure that the data is usable. Session will open the session for us in order to transmit and receive data. The data will go to the transport layer. If there is a segmentation will happen in transport layer. A transport layer will add a source port. The source port could be randomly chosen and the destination port. So when we use our browser and type any website, this is called HTTP request. There is HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP stand for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and HTTPS stand for Secure HTTP. So HTTP protocol use port 80. So as you can see right here, we put the destination with port 80. Transport layer will forward the data to the network layer. The network layer will add my IP address as a source and it will add Google IP address as a destination. Then the network layer will forward the data to the data link layer. Data link layer will add the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. Please pause here for a second and let's look again at our example. So as you can see right here, when the data go to the network layer, it add my IP address as a source and the Google IP address as a destination. And when it goes to the data link layer, it add my MAC address as a source and the Google MAC address as a destination. So this process called encapsulation. After that, the data will go to the physical. The physical will start to add information about the NIC card and the cable, then send it as an electronic signal in case of Ethernet copper cable. When the data arrive to the destination, the destination device will do something called decapsulation. Decapsulation is the opposite of encapsulation and it is the process that occur when the receiver uh, receive data and start to remove the layers. So what will happen here? We're gonna go from the physical layer to the application layer in the decapsulation process. The receiver will receive the data as an electronic signal at the physical layer and then it will transfer this electronic signal to bits because our computer doesn't understand anything else but bits. Then the data will go to the data link layer. The data link layer will be careless about any information here except the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. So what will happen here in the receiver side? The receiver will, will save the source MAC address if there is a response to that data and it will look at the destination MAC address. So the destination MAC address match a Google server MAC address as in our example right here. So this will be kind of confirmation for this server that this data is meant to him. The data link layer will remove this layer and send the data to the network layer. Network layer will look at the source IB, destination IB address. After he confirms that this data is sent to him, he will remove this layer and send the data to the transport layer. The transport layer will look at the destination port number. So Google server will identify that this is a HTTP request. So the data will be ready to go through session, presentation and application. And application layer will start to read this HTTP request. OSI model is an old version of uh, the models. Nowadays, we are using something called TCP IP. TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. It does the same job as OSI model, but currently TCP IP is the standard. 
we mean by the standard that any computer understand and work or compatible with the TCP IP. TCP IP, TCP IP compressed the seven layers and made it uh, five layers only. Some people say they are four layers only. So it is five or four, whatever would you like to call it. But actually all the engineers are using a specific names that we're gonna see here. Uh, that's why I'd like to choose five layers for this TCP IP layers. So the application presentation session became application layer, transport still transport, network layer still network layer, data link still data link, physical still physical. The data in each layer of those layers have a name. So the data in application presentation session called data. In the transport layer, we call it segment. So why do we call it segment and what is the difference between segment and bucket, let's say, for example. As you can see, the information of the data in the transport layer look different than the data in the network layer. So in the transport layer, we have the data plus the source port destination port. But we don't have a source IB and the destination IB. Same thing also with the network layer. The data in the network layer doesn't have source MAC and the destination MAC. So the data in each one of those layers have a name. And those names are very common. And a lot of engineers are using those names. So the data in application called the data. In a transport layer it called the segment. In network layer called the packet. In data link layer called the frame. And in physical, it called the bits. There is some people calling those layers different names. For example, people calling the transport layer as a host to host layer, network as an internet layer or internetwork layer, data link layer, some people call it network access or network interface. And some people also calling the physical layer as the hardware layer. Before OSI and the TCP IP, every vendor used to use them own layers. For example, IBM used to use them own layers, which is totally different than other vendor. Same thing with DEC. They used to use them own layers, which is totally different than IBM and any other vendor. During that time, Transmitting data between one vendor to another vendor was very complicated and it required a lot of efforts. During the 90s, OSI and the TCP IP start to become standard. And nowadays, TCP IP is the standard for any device. So what is the protocols that we can see in our layers? In application layer, we can see a protocol like HTTP, FTP, SMTP. Transport layer, we can see TCP or UDP. In application layer, there is actually more than those protocols. But for the transport layer, we can see only TCP or UDP. In network layer, we can see Internet Protocol version 4 or Internet Protocol version 6 or we can see the ICMP protocol. For data link and the physical, we can see the Ethernet or 802.11 which referring to the Wi-Fi. You can think right now, should I download the TCP IP in order to transmit the data? And I didn't actually download anything in order to transmit the data through the internet, right? As we mentioned before, TCP IP became the standard. Any computer is supporting the TCP IP. So let's check my computer for example to know if the TCP IP exists on my computer or no. So we're gonna click here, right click on this icon, click on open network and internet setting, click on change adapter option. We can click in any of those interfaces. In my machine I have four or five NIC cards so we can click in any one of those click on properties 
and as you can see right here I have internet protocol version 4 TCP IP version 4 we need to see how how is the TCP IP work and what is the data we can see in order to see information about the TCP IP we can download a free software called Wireshark it's very easy to download and it's free so it's a couple clicks and you will find that you download it and install it in your machine so after you download it you can open Wireshark a Wireshark is kind of monitoring tool it will monitor the traffic in my machine so after you download it we can click on the interface that we want to see the traffic right now I'm using Ethernet for the internet uh, I will open my browser here and I can type HTTP websites uh, we can click in any website let's let's click on this one and as you can see there is http colon backslash backslash and then the website url so http which using port 80 and it stands for hypertext transfer protocol so let's click on that we can click in anything here just to capture some data after that we can go back to Wireshark and right here in apply or display filter you probably your your interface could be like that so you can just drag this and drop it here so we can come here and type HTTP so we want to filter this traffic and see only HTTP traffic click enter then we can click in any of those data for example we can click here and as you can see there is information about the frame right here it's using the name uh, of the data in the data link layer there is the ethernet information about the ethernet the physical component and the data link layer internet protocol version 6 this is information about the network layer a transmission control protocol or TCP so this is information about the transport layer and it's saying right here HTTP protocol which is hypertext transfer protocol we can uh, we can open any of those in order to read more information about the data so let's open Ethernet right here we have uh, information about the destination MAC address the source MAC address it's saying even here Dell I am currently using a Dell workstation uh, it's using the IB version 6 and this is the source IB destination IB address as uh, a transmission control protocol and as you can see here it has a random source port and the destination port is 80 as in our example it's using the TCP so transmission control protocol stand for TCP and as you can see right here there is something called sequence number uh, as a network engineer we don't really have to understand all of that information but at least we can read the source MAC the destination MAC we can see the information about the IB address information we can we can read information about the TCP protocol the source port the destination port but we don't have to fully understand this information at least for a ccna engineer so right here for tcp there is something called sequence number so what is that sequence number uh, please don't get confused between tcp ip and tcp Uh, TCP IP refer to the layers so this is TCP IP model and the TCP by itself without slash IP referring to the transmission control protocol and this is the protocol exists on transport layer so in the transport layer we have the TCP and UDB TCP is a reliable protocol and the TCP 
always confirming that the receiver received the data and it received it correctly. For that reason, TCP use something called sequence number. So let's imagine that I have a channel between my desktop and the google.com server. And I would like to send three data to google.com. So this data could be HTTP request, for example, uploading something in Google Drive, for example. So if I want to send three data to google.com and I am using the TCP protocol, in that case, the TCP will add the sequence number to each single data in order to make sure that the data transmitted correctly and there is no data loss happen on the middle. So when my computer have data1 and this data is ready, my computer will send data1 with sequence number 1. When Google receive this data, it will send me an acknowledgement that he received data1 and he's waiting for data2. My desktop will send data2 with sequence number 2 when it arrives to google.com or to the receiver it will send me an acknowledgement that he received data2 and he's ready to receive data3 same thing will happen with data3 that way TCP will confirm that the data received correctly and there is no data loss happen in the middle during that course we will hear the word network protocols a lot so what is the network protocols network protocols is set of rules determine how data transmitted between devices regardless of any differences of internal processes so regardless if i am using core i4 core i3 low speed computer a high speed computer desktop a laptop regardless of any of those differences the protocol will transmit the data correctly. Example of the protocols is DHCP protocol. A DHCP is a protocol that will assign IP address to our devices. So most of the time when you are using desktop, a phone, laptop and you connect it to the Wi-Fi, you don't have to put any IP address, right? This because our desktop or our laptop is using the DHCP protocol which will assign IP address automatically. As you can tell, regardless of any desktop you ever used or phone or laptop, you will get an IP address automatically. Uh, there is also something called RFC or request for comments. RFC provide a documentation and many aspects of any computer protocols or most of the computer protocols. Example of the R, uh, RFC is RFC 1180. So if you search for RFC 1180, you will find more information about TCP IP. Uh, for the protocols, there is a standard protocols and there is proprietary protocols. Standard protocols work with any device and there is organizations that publish those standard protocols. Uh, the two big organizations that produce standard protocols is IEEE and IETF. IEEE stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers and IETF stands for Internet Engineering Task Force. I believe half of the protocols that we will hear about during CCNA is made by IEEE. Uh, those organizations are non-profit organization. Example of the standard protocols is LLDB and HSRB. Uh, there is also the proprietary protocols. So Cisco provide or produce a lot of protocols. Uh, those protocols work only with Cisco devices. Uh, right now we are not talking about client side protocols. We are not talking about protocols that will work with uh, our desktops, for example, or laptop, because most of those protocols are standard protocol. They can work with any device. Uh, we are now right, right now talking about protocols that will work between the network devices. 
protocol will work between switch and router for example so Cisco produce a lot of protocols like those protocols that will work between network devices between routers switches firewalls example of those protocols is CDB Cisco discovery protocol and VRRB so CDB VRRB will not work in any proto in any device except Cisco devices so this is the end for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next one